I've been using Russell Croman's Star Exterminator recently, and it's incredibly useful for creating a separate star composite layer, enabling you to retouch deep sky object detail independent of star detail. I'll show you how to quickly extract stars from your astrophotography data and put them on a separate layer. First, once you've installed the plugin, you will need to go to the Preferences or Settings dialog in Affinity Photo. On Mac OS, you can access this under the App Title menu, and on Windows, you can find it under the Edit menu. Go down to the Photoshop Plugins category and check Allow Unknown Plugins to be used. This will then allow Star Exterminator to appear on the Plugins filter list. Now I'll cover the procedure if you are using normalized, logarithmic, or color-preserving tone stretches. With the Tarantula Nebula data here, I'll first rename the data layers to L, R, G, and B. Then I'll run the LRGB Composition Setup macro. I can leave the Levels and Curves adjustments enabled, then run Color Preserving Tone Stretch. I now have a merged layer at the top of the layer stack here. I'll duplicate this with Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows. Then I'll go to Filters, Plugins, RC Astro, Star Exterminator, and I'll click OK to run the plugin. This duplicated layer now becomes starless. I can change its blend mode to Difference, which exposes all the star detail. Then go to Layer, Merge Visible, to create a new layer containing this detail. I'll name it Stars, then set its blend mode to Add. I can now select the layer underneath and change its blend mode back to Normal. I'll also rename it Starless. Now I have my stars being composited on top of the starless result. I can hide and show this layer to demonstrate. This means I can perform all sorts of retouching underneath the stars layer. For example, I might run Enhance Structure to really bring out the nebula detail. Then I could also run Enhance DSO Luminosity. And finally, Enhance Red Signal. I'll change the opacity of this new group to 40% to reduce its strength. What I can also do is select the Stars layer and drop its opacity down, which enables me to dim the stars and better promote the deep sky object detail. As a final step, I can also go back underneath the Stars layer and sharpen the deep sky object detail without sharpening the stars. For example, I can use regular strength bandpass sharpening to really bring out the structure of the nebula detail. Here is another quick example, this time if I am using the separate mono data stretching macros. I'll rename my layers to HA, OIII, and SII. Then delete the levels and curves adjustments, as I won't be needing them. I'll use the SHO mono log stretch macro, then color map this data with a standard SHO mapping. The mono data stretching macros do not create a merged pixel layer at the top of the layer stack, so we must create one manually to run the plugin on. I'll go to Layer, Merge Visible to achieve this, then run Star Exterminator on this layer. Now I can name this layer Starless and set its blend mode to Difference. I'll use Layer. Merge Visible again, name this layer Stars, and set its blend mode to Add. Then change the Starless layer's blend mode back to Normal. As before, I can alter the opacity of my Stars layer, then use various retouching techniques such as reduce background luminosity underneath this layer. I'll also use Enhance Structure, and immediately invert the layer and paint back into areas with pure white to selectively apply the structural enhancement. I could then perhaps follow up with Enhance Yellow Signal and reduce its opacity to 40%. And there we go, I just wanted to give you a couple of ideas for how you might use the Star Exterminator plugin. It's a very useful addition to the toolkit as it really simplifies the process of separating star detail from other detail in your images, allowing you to work on them separately.